Hello everyone. Today we're looking at the Hanmatech HM310P DC power supply. The 3 here in the name means 30 volts, the 10 is 10 amps, the P means this is a programmable unit. There's also a 305 unit, which is 30 volts at 5 amps, and there's other brands of this model. Oftentimes you'll see the brand up here. There's Rock Seed, Bother Run, and others. This particular model here, the 10 amp, costs a little less than $100 on Amazon. Now, this is a programmable DC power supply. And, you know, traditionally power supplies, you just set the voltage and the load draws the current it needs and that's it. You don't need to set anything. But with this unit, we can set the current and limit the current. That's the programmable part. For safety features, we have things like over voltage protection, uh, over current protection if it draws too much current. We have over power, too many watts coming out of this. Uh, even an over, over temperature uh, protection, and also a great thing, short circuit protection. Now, since this is a uh, programmable unit, it's controlled digitally, so it does things like makes it very precise to make settings. It remembers things when you turn it off and turn it back on. Um, so, really flexible unit. It also does things, the programmable aspects are, it lets us save voltage and current and other settings for retrieval later. So you can program those in, the ones you use the most, and then at the press of a button, or double press really, you can bring those back for your units. So, for our setup today, you see we have a multimeter here, just to look at the output, it's reading nothing right now. And we have a fan here, a small fan load. So this will turn when we have an output, and we'll use this for our testing. So. Let's get started today with voltage and current settings and see what this unit looks like. Once our unit is plugged in, we can turn it on with this big orange button. Notice the lights come on, the buttons light up, and you can hear the fan start and stop. The fan is temperature controlled and it will come on if you have heavy loads. Now it's important to note that this big orange button does not turn on the output. The output is between the black negative terminal and the red positive terminal. The output is actually controlled by this button here, which has a little power on off symbol, which is now red and indicated here by off. This means that output is off. We turn the output on by pressing this button. It's now green. We'll turn it off again. This is a very handy feature because it means you can make your adjustments with your load effectively disconnected without having to plug everything out. So you'll be using this button quite a bit and it's really good practice to have the output off when you're making adjustments. So let's make an adjustment. Now that's done through these buttons and this sh shuttle knob here. So we have U here, which is for voltage. Some international bodies uh, use the symbol U for voltage instead of V. And possibly here, that's because it's easier to show a U on a seven segment display than a V. And we have an I button for current, amps. And this is really our enter button here. So let's set some voltage. So let's select voltage. And now we can use the shuttle to increase that. But that would take a long time. And just like your alarm clock, you can move over and select different digits using the buttons underneath. So let's set up three volts. And let's pop this back to zero. Now let's set some current. Set current. Let's here go to 200 milliamps, 0.2 of a volt, and let's set that. Now let's turn on the output. So our fan's running and we're reading three volts on our multimeter. Everything looks good just like we said. Now, so here's our three volts. Now notice this fan load is consuming, even though we've set a limit of 200 milliamps, it's consuming 78. This here shows the power. This is power, of course, is volts multiplied by amps. So if you multiply the three volts by the 0 0.079 amps, you will get 0.237, about a quarter of a watt, which is the same watt you use in your light bulbs. Um, and everything works well. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about normally on a power supply we set voltage, but in this unit you can set current. Now this is a really handy thing, because let's say you have a device like, um, let's say a battery, lithium battery, 
and you can't charge it at any more than an amp or you'll damage it. Well, you can set the maximum current here and the power supply will output up to that current and then it will stop there. It will keep going but it will limit it to there. So let's have a look at that. So you can see here that this consumes 79 milliamps. So let's look at the current here. Let's turn this off, the output off, right? We have it set to 200 milliamps. So let's look at this current here. We know it consumes about 70 or 80. So let's go to current here and let's go over here. Let's knock back this to zero and let's only give it, let's say, 50, uh, 40. Enter. Now let's turn on the output. Notice how slow the fan is going, barely going, because we're only giving it our minimum milliamps. It's consuming now 33, which isn't very good for the, for the fan, but you can see it here. Barely going. Now let's put this current back, and you can see here it's showing red in that it's gone over. So let's put our current back to something reasonable for this unit. Uh, and let's look at some other settings here. Okay, so let's put this back to 200, like that. Now, I made adjustments there while it is hot and the output is on, and you can see that can work. I should say something about the settings that's important to know. So we select our voltage here, and we can select our units. One thing that can be a little frustrating with this unit is it has a five-second inactivity timeout. So you could be in the middle of setting something, and you're going to set your, your current in a second, and if you leave it too long, it saves your setting midstream. So just either move along a little quickly or just go back to what you want to do. Um, one last thing before we finish this section is that, oh, our power supply is going off, uh, is that uh, it remembers what you set last, but it will have the output off when you turn it back on for safety. So let's turn it off. Everything is off. Now notice when we turned it off, our output was on, it was green, and it was supplying power. Now let's turn it back on. Notice it comes back at our three volts, everything comes back nice, but the output is off. This is a great safety maneuver. We turn our output on, and we're good to go. So with that, we'll move on to the next session and some of the programmable aspects of this unit, uh, such as saving voltage and current settings, and talk a little bit more about how to do setup. In this section, we're going to save some voltages and currents and automatically loop through them. So, saving is done through these memory one through memory six buttons. You can save six different sets of voltages and currents and time. Now, it's quite simple. Uh, so let's get started. You just press the button you wish to program Say here, I'll do M4 because I've already programmed some of these. So I'll press M4. Now, be careful of the five second timeout, the inactivity timeout, because if you don't do anything within five seconds, it jumps out of that mode. So you do have to kind of move it along a little bit, as we mentioned before. So let's press M M4. Now in this case, we jump between these by pressing the shuttle button like this. We can still do our adjustments as normal with our buttons. So let's do this and set up 5 volts. Press in the shuttle button to go to the amps. Let's set up um, 200 milli 300 milliamps. Press the button. Let's set up a time. We're going to set up a time here of 3 seconds and we're going to do an enter. Now. We're going to talk a little bit about this in a second. So now we have programmed the memory 4 slot. And let's press it once. And now the output has not turned on. This unit is flashing. Now the 5 second inactivity catches us out again. So let's go back in. And you must press it twice to latch. Now why is that? Each time you press a saved setting, you must press the button twice to restore that setting. Well, actually, there's a very good reason. The reason is, let's press M1 here. Notice it's 12 volts. But the 12 volts is not output, because that might blow up my motor. In other words, when you press the button first, you get to see what it is. 
And only when you press it the second time does it actually take the setting, an important safety feature. So there isn't anything wrong when you press the button one time and it starts flashing. All that means is you just press it again and that sets it up, like so. So that's, it's as simple as that. Now, let's look at how you might want to rotate through these voltages automatically. And you'll notice when we set up M4, we set up a three second uh, time here. Let's look at M3. I have that set at 3.3 volts with four seconds. So remember those two. Now, um, you might want to rotate through voltages, for example. It's not a a massively uh, common use case but let's say you're doing some test equipment and you want to test it at the extremes you know you're using 5 volt equipment you want to make sure it works at 4.5 volts 5 volts and 5.5 you just want to make sure it works at all those voltages so the way we do this is with list now a little different here to activate this button you must press it for two seconds so press it and hold it down for two seconds and now it's blue and we're in list mode now we can add whichever memories we want included in our rotation of automated settings by pressing these buttons. And you can see what they are when you press them. So let's look at M3, which is five volts. And let's look at the one we just set, which is, oh, M3 is three volts rather. And the one we just set is five volts. So we have that set up. Notice we have three seconds here and we have four seconds there. So now to rotate through both of those in list mode, all we do is turn on the output. Notice three volts, the countdown. Now it's going to four volts, the countdown. Back to three volts, the countdown. Five volts, countdown. So it's jumping between the two memories we set. That's it. That's how to save voltages and automatically rotate through them. Turn off list, hold it down again for two seconds, and we're out of that mode. Next, we look at some safety, important safety measures like over voltage protection, over current protection uh, that can protect your equipment. Here, we're going to look at the over voltage and over current protection features. That's through these two buttons here, OVP, over voltage protection, and OCP. So let's press this. So this is the, now remember our five second rule, see, jumps back. So you have to do something inside the five second inactivity, a little frustrating. So press the OVP again, OVP, uh, that's over voltage protection. Now we can set the voltage we want here. So let's, let's set this voltage to, we know our unit uh, is set to three volts or so. So let's set this to two volts like this, and then let's turn it on. This button here, pressing the over voltage again, turns it on and off. So you must turn it on, and then let's press the enter B button to save it. So now if we look at our over voltage protection, it's set to two volts, and we're good to go. So now let's do our M4. So we press it once, it's five volts at 300 milliamps. Oh, okay, so let's set that. By pressing it twice, we set it. Okay, now let's turn it on. Notice it turns off right away. Over voltage protection, and you might have seen the voltage button flash. So it's set at five volts, 300 milliamps, but our over voltage protection is set for two volts, and it's on, so it shut the system down. This is the difference between setting up your voltage and current, as we looked at before, where the voltage is limited to what you set it at using the U button, and the current is limited to what you set it at using the I button, this voltage here and this current here. But when you set up over voltage and over current protection, if those triggers are met, the unit turns off completely. So let's look at over voltage protection again by pressing the button. You'll notice it turns off. So pressing this each time toggles. And let's look at the over current protection. Same idea here. So let's set this to, we know our fan takes about 80 milliamps. So let's set it to about 40. And let's turn it on by pressing it again. And let's enter that. Now let's turn on the output and you might see this light flash here as, if I keep my hand out of the way, as I turn it on, 
on. Yes, over current protection, it cut off the power completely. The power is now turned off. So these are two great safety features. Um, next, we look at some last features of this unit. Um, be back soon. One last feature I'd like to show here is the panel lock button. This is a, another important safety feature. So as you can see here, if we turn on our output, we're reading our voltage, our 3.3 volts, and our fan is running. Now, we can adjust these controls live, and I think you'll be able to see here the fan. I won't go too far. We're setting voltage, setting the fan up here, and that's good. Or you could accidentally press a button. Now, a way of preventing that is with, I'll turn this off, with the lock button. Now, normally using this button saves values if you just tap it. But if you hold it for two seconds, it locks the controls. So if we hold this button down, I'll try to keep my finger to the side so you can see it come on. So I'm pressing it, I'm holding it. After two seconds, this lock button comes on. All these buttons are now locked. The output isn't locked. You can still turn the unit on. You can turn the unit off but all the controls are locked. We can unlock them by pressing for another two seconds. Now the lock is off, and now we can go back to adjusting again. This is an important safety feature. So that wraps it up for this unit. A few little quirks about it. I think it's a great unit. I use it with my Arduino projects, different projects, repairing things. It works really well. Uh, just a few quirks about the interface. Remember, uh, the shuttle here changes the digits. You can use the arrows. You press the shuttle to go through digits when you're doing the memory. Still works great. Um, typically, with the over-voltage protection and over-current, you're going to set those a little high so you're not always messing with them because if you trigger any of those, the unit will just turn off. And that's it. So I hope you enjoy the uh, Hamatech HM310P DC power supply.